Welcome to another Pocket Coach video, and today I'm going to be talking about three secrets ski resorts don't want you to know. Before we hop in this video, go check out the app that I designed called Pocket Coach. So far, the app is pretty sick. You can post your footage on there, track your max speeds, and play some fun games. So go check it out. If you don't know who I am, my name is Cyrus Corbett owner of Pocket Coach and 986 Productions. Besides just doing social media stuff, I've also worked in the snowboard industry for about six years, doing snowboard coaching, park crew, scanning tickets, pretty much any position at a ski resort, I have done it. If you don't know, you can go to a ski resort and you can pay extra money to get coaching. Whether you're a skier or snowboarder, most resorts offer certain type of coaching to teach you how to ride. Now, one thing that resorts don't want you to know is how much training those coaches actually have. Now, I remember when I was growing up, I would think a snowboard coach, a ski coach, would have tons and tons and tons of training. And the reality is, ski and snowboard coaches really don't have that much training. Yes, they might have coached for a couple years, but a lot of resorts only require one to two days of training to get you to become a coach. Now, do I think this is a bad thing or do, you, do I think this is a problem? No, not at all. A lot of coaches have a bunch of experience skiing and snowboarding, but just because that they might be a really good skier or snowboarder doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna be a good coach. Yes, they might have a few days of training or yes, they might have been in the industry as a coach for a while and that might be a different story. But sometimes coaches can be not as experienced as you might think. Now, is this a problem? Should this hold you back from getting a coach or getting a ski instructor? I think definitely not. I think having someone there to walk you through the process of learning how to ski or snowboard is always gonna be a good thing. It is gonna cost extra, and that kinda goes into my next point. That's another thing that ski resorts don't want you to know, is when you pay for coaching, you're not just paying for that coach, which this could be kind of unfortunate because I've been a snowboard coach and I know it costs a lot of money, and that money doesn't go to the coach. It goes to the resort, and about half of it goes to the coach, which it makes sense because the ski resorts are trying to hire the coaches, but in the end, I feel like a lot more money should go to the coaches themselves because they're the ones putting in the work. They're the one dealing with the customers. So a lot of the money doesn't actually go to the coaches. So how you can avoid this is making sure to always tip your coaches, especially if you have a good ski or snowboard instructor, make sure to always give them a good tip by the end of their session because that money goes straight to them and instructors don't get paid a lot of money. So they're working for bare minimum wages. So any tip that you give to the instructors is gonna be highly beneficial for them and it's gonna keep them continuing to do what they love. Now, I think you also gotta take this with a grain of salt because I think it's gonna be all hit and miss, especially depending on what resort you're at, how much you're gonna pay for a lesson, what level of snowboarding you are. Like, if you're an advanced rider and you're trying to get a coat, you're trying to go pay for some coach at a ski resort, it's really not gonna be worth it. If you're maybe a first timer, you've never been on the slopes, it's gonna be extremely helpful because they're gonna teach you how to get in your boots, how to get up the lift, just basic stuff like this. But pretty much after that beginner level, hiring a coach from a ski resort or something like that is really not gonna be very beneficial. A lot of those coaches are just trained how to, pe how to get people down the slopes. And if you already know how to get down the slopes, it's really gonna be a waste of money for you. Now, I will say, some resorts do offer advanced training. However, this is usually a lot more rare. So if you seem like you're an advanced rider and you wanna get coaching, for one, check out Pot Coach, but also invest into other ways of learning. So the second secret that ski resorts don't want people to know, a lot of times they actually misrepresent the snow conditions. Now, most resorts have live cams where you can see the little box with the little pole sticking out of it with the inches and numbers so you can see how much snow is going. From my experience, ski resorts always overestimate how much snow they're going to get or how much snow they have. A lot of times, those boxes are placed in really good spots where specifically you get a lot of moisture and a lot of snowfall in that specific area, which it might not be the same for the rest of the mountain. And two, the boxes itself have a pole in the middle and naturally the snow sticks to that pole in the middle. And so what happens is actually the snow kind of follows it up that pole a little bit. And it might not be the exact 
amount of inches you might think it is. Now, is this really a bad thing? No, obviously ski resorts are trying to get you to the mountain, trying to get you hyped on the snowfall, but it's something that they might not want you to know is their snow readings might not be the same. I worked in a resort and I would have to be there getting first chair in the morning and I'd look on the cams and it would say 10 inches. And by the time I get to the top and was riding down, I realized pretty fast that there was definitely not 10 inches on the snow. So again, take this with a grain of salt and also realize that a lot of resorts use snow making. So when they're talking about their base or how much inches they have in total, a lot of times they're not contributing how much actually is from snow making. Say a resort says we have 300 inches. Well, how many inches of that are from snow making snow? Because a lot of times when they're making those runs, they'll be blowing snow and then they'll push all that snow with the cat and then more snow will fall and they'll blow more snow. Yeah, they definitely might have 300 inches, but what part of that is man-made snow? Now, is there a really difference between man-made snow and natural snow? I mean, yeah, I'd say there is a little bit of a difference. When it comes to groomer runs, it doesn't really matter. But the problem with not saying what's man-made snow and what's not is because when you get into the trees or you get into spots where there's no man-made snow, it's definitely not gonna be the same base as a main groomer run. Now, the last thing that ski resorts don't want you to know is how many passes they actually oversell on. Because a lot of times, ski resorts actually have a general capacity. How many people you can actually fit on the mountain, how many people you can bring into the parking, and most of the times, especially this last season, they are way over exceeding their limits. Within the last year, there was 64.7 million ski resort visits. Now, this is a 6.6% increase than the following year. Now, the ski and snowboard industry has done nothing but grow within the last couple of years, which is awesome. I love to see more people on the mountain, more people riding, but the only problem with that is a lot of these ski resorts were built years and years ago and they never expected to see this many numbers at their ski resort. Instead of lowering the price of tickets, they usually keep their ticket prices the same, even though it's gonna be extremely difficult to find parking, to get on the lift. Let me know what you guys think in the comments because I think that because of the growing industry and because there's so many people going to the mountain, it's kind of ruining the experience that people are having because you end up having to find impossible parking spots. A lot of times these parking lots get so full, you have to take shuttles from like the base area, which takes miles and hours, and you end up having to wait in line for a lift, sometimes over an hour, which just to get one run and stand there in the cold, it kind of sucks. Let me know what you guys think is whether we should limit the amount of passes and limit the amount of day passes ski resorts should be offering or how you could resolve this problem. Because again, the ski resorts don't want you to know that they're way past their capacity on how many people should be on the mountain based on the parking lot and based on how many people they can continue to get up that lift. Which it honestly is starting to create a serious problem. If you look at some of the Brighton or Solitude areas in Utah, that in order to get up there, you have to buy a parking pass or you have to carpool and it ends up just being insanely packed on the mountain. You know, I feel like at some point, things have to change. Things have to be different. Whether it's gonna be limiting the amount of passes and ski tickets that are sold or creating more capacity on parking lots, whatever it is, something has got to change. Anyway, I hope this video supplied you guys with a little bit of knowledge and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments.